Welcome back. Okay, I should have ended the last one by reminding you to save your work and do so frequently. Uh, you never can tell if you're going to have a PC crash or do something where you might lose your work. So file, and then uh, I recommend picking save as. <clears throat> and then, yeah, if you haven't already, name your work. You already saw me name this a tutorial. Uh, and then save it to a location uh, that you're comfortable with. Or, of course, you can just shift control s or uh, after you've already made your initial save, just control s after that. And you'll be fine. <clears throat> Alright, so we just finished the uh, sensor and platform, the planetary sensor and platform on the lower part of the hull, and I promised to move on to the linear accelerator and the impulse engines, uh, which are a little more difficult in some ways. The linear accelerator is actually Moderately easy. Let's take a quick look at Alan Sinclair here, his drawings. Uh, we're going to zoom in and look at it from the side. Now, he has this being kind of a, it looks like a straight line, but it's actually not. If, if you'll notice, this section here actually curves up and then meets the hull here. So this portion is actually higher than this portion. Now, it's got <clears throat> some louvers or fins or something that come out of the center, rise up, and actually are fairly straight. They extend a little bit beyond the uh, front of this object here. And then uh, let's take a look at what it looks like up top. Okay, so here in his plans, now you'll, you'll see why, although this is <coughs> known, at least in fandom, as the uh, linear accelerator, it's supposed to, it sits right atop of the impulse engines, which are back here, it, it's, it's quite often referred to as the baseball bat. Um, I say it looks a little more like a cricket bat, but whatever, and this, although it doesn't show it well, there are actually s supposed to be, I think, three uh, fins that come out of the top here and extend up front. Now I've seen this variously uh, squared off or rounded uh, and uh, we'll get we'll get to that in a moment. Here's that side shot again uh, and let's let's go take a look at some pictures. So here's um, maybe the clearest shot we ever saw of the linear accelerator during the run of the original series. You can actually see that basic baseball bat shape here and this raised section in front. And with the rounded off section for those uh, veins or vents. Um, where are my other... Here we go. So I'm going to... This is a similar shot... You can see the same thing there, especially included the rounded front. You can actually see a little bit of the fins that are sticking up. This shot is from the Corbo maneuver, about the clearest we ever got from the back. Now, what you can learn from this is, if you take a look, this flat end has actually got a line between it, the bottom of it, and the top of the uh, impulse engines. So there's a dividing line here, and this is angled forward, this sliced off section of back. Here's another one of Alan's excellent plans. Take a look at the back here, and he's got this rounded as it should be, and that uh, rounded here, and then the, these are the fins or airlines or whatever that pop out. And then I've got other views, like this is actually a much clearer shot when the Enterprise was brought in for its uh, original restoration, uh, although somewhat after it. I saw this before the year 2000. Um, Chris Trice took some marvelous pictures, which I don't know if they're still available. But you can just barely see that these uh, three fins here go out front and are indeed rounded off. And we'll get to 
Now, here's the side of the Enterprise that we never actually saw during the run of the series. Whenever we saw the port side of the ship, uh, it was always the starboard side, or if you want to think about it this way, facing forward, the right side. Um, and then what they would do is they would film it, and they would actually reverse the lettering of the, uh, of the decals so that it looked uh, like, uh, like text would look like in a mirror. And then when they were done, they would flip the film backwards, well, from left to right, and it would look like the Enterprise, uh, the, the port side of the USS Enterprise. We only saw that in a few episodes, uh, Shore Leave and uh, Mirror Mirror. But that's why you'll notice on this side, they never bothered with a whole lot of detail. There are fewer windows here and in the front and, amazingly, on the side because you only ever saw it, say, head-on or three-quarters from the starboard side or underneath from the starboard side. And a big tip-off was that the lights underneath the uh, saucer on this side, were there were very few, and there was none of the signage that's on the port side. As a matter of fact, you'll notice the neck and the engineering section are unfinished because they ran cables in through this side of the ship uh, for power. So they never even had that weird arm uh, put in on the side. Anyway, I, I had that up so you could see how this linear accelerator lays. It follows the contours of the ship. Uh, this side, uh, this front uh, goes down. It stays about the same thickness, of maybe a little thicker right here, and then goes down to the end. We'll just run through these real fast. You can see how it lies here and here. You can see there's a little gap there after all of these years. Now, here's the side that we always saw from. It has more details, more windows. You can still kind of see how this lies along and the fact that this front part goes out further than the rest. Here's that gap I was mentioning, but since this uh, picture of Chris Trisis is much clearer, uh, you can actually see the gap there between the end of the linear accelerator and the top of the impulse engines. I've, I've heard it supposed that this is due to shrinkage over the years. I don't, uh, I don't particularly care if you have this meet the top of this, but from what I see, there is a gap. And of course, this whole thing angles forward. Here's a closer shot. And what's really important is the angle of this back piece of the baseball bat and this angle of the uh, of the uh, fins or airlines that come out of the top, it, it does not really appear to be the same angle. And you can just see one, two, three uh, tiny little fins there, or if you want, two depressions uh, that appear to be about equidistant on the top. Uh, another shot from a different angle. Okay, so here is an excellently clear shot from Chris Trice. Uh, and you can see all the structures I've talked about, the shape of the baseball bat, the three fins running down the center, uh, and the angulation in back. The uh, fins angulation is greater than the back angulation of the baseball bat. This is about the clearest shot you'll ever see, uh, uh, a, a real close-up of that whole area. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> you can see that this, whoops, hang on. You can see that this actually appears flatter in the front, becomes more rounded, and then starts to flatten out towards the back. Another shot. A little fuzzy. And here's the actual uh, close-up from when they were doing the first restoration on the model. Then they've actually started to strip away the paint, and they had to do a little repair here. As a matter of fact, this almost, <coughs> pardon me, it's kind of circular here. I don't know how fancy we're going to get when we uh, reproduce this, but you can see the actual item here and what it looks like. Okay, cool. Alrighty then. So we're going to go back to our model here now that we've seen uh, what that shape is supposed to look like. And there are a couple of different ways that we can do this. We could start off with a deformed sphere and uh, do a pretty good uh, job with that. As a matter of fact, that sounds like the easiest. Let's try that. All right, so 
inside Blender, we're going to hit Shift A, Mesh, get a UV sphere, and that is set at 32 and 16. Okay, uh, at least for now. That's actually pretty good. Uh, since we're going to smooth it out anyway, maybe we can get away with that. So we're going to rotate, hit R on your keyboard, type 90 degrees, and hit Enter. All right, great. I'm going to hit G to grab this, move it to where I want the whole thing to start, and then hit S on my keyboard. Oh, hang on. Make sure that we are not in 3D cursor for our centering. We want bounding box. We want to only affect this item. It's S for scale, and then bring that sucker right down. We're going to hit 7 on our keyboard to switch to top view. And then, actually, you know what? Just like we do with a lot of these things for the moment, I'm going to hit M for move. I'm going to take our new item to the second layer. We're going to hit second layer down here so that we've got only the plans and our one item. I'm going to shift middle mouse click and move the whole assembly to the center of my screen and kind of zoom in here. All right, now we can, we can do some uh, additional work. Now, it, to move this, since this is already center lined, oh, I should have showed you that uh, shift s to move our cursor to the center cursor to the center and that's why when, uh, whenever we add an object it will add wherever the cursor is so you can place that wherever you want <coughs> but i definitely wanted this in the center so when i grab it you can move it anywhere so you don't necessarily want that if you want to move it hit g on your keyboard and then x like x-ray and that way you can only move it back and forth on that center line I'm going to kind of center this so that it's towards centered kind of around this uh, top here, about the equidistant all along this curve. I'm going to hit S for scale and bring it right down to meet the outside edges. Okay, great. Now let's switch to view number one. Shift, middle mouse click to move this to about the same spot. And we'll notice that it's, although it's fine this way, it's obviously far too tall this way. So I'm going to S for scale, Z for scaling up and down, and I'm going to scale it down like this. Now we'll probably do some changing, so I don't want to scale it down too much. As a matter of fact, we're going to hit Tab to go into edit mode, hit A to get rid of a lot of stuff, and... I only want to keep the front half. Matter of fact, an awful lot of the bottom isn't really necessary either. But for right now, so this is our center line. Uh, I'm going to place my cursor just to the left of the center line. Hit B like brown. Left mouse click, drag, and select all the rear verts. I'm also in Z uh, so that everything is transparent. So I've got all the verts both front and back from this view. Hit X on my keyboard, delete the vertices. Now I'm going to hit Z so we can see what this looks like in 3D. Okay, cool. So now we've got this, I don't know, kind of missile or shark front one. All right, cool. Z. I want to, I want to now place my cursor just to the right of those center vertices. B to select, left mouse click and drag. And what I want to do is I want to hit E. On my keyboard, X to restrict its motion. I can't go up and down or left and right. And at the moment, I'm dragging it all the way out to the end. Okay, cool. A to deselect, and let's take a look at that from the top. Oh, a little much. All right, so actually what I really want is right about here is the thinnest part of the whole thing, just above the green line where Alan shows you where the hull continues. So actually, I'm going to... B, select, G to grab, X, like X-ray, and I'm going to move this right to that thinnest part, right about there. Left click once to disengage your selection, and now I want to scale, but only scale in the Y direction. You can actually see a little representation here. X is going left and right. Y is going top to bottom on our screen orientation from a 7, so scale Y. And that means it won't get any thicker, for, it won't get any thinner or thicker from top to bottom. But going from left to right, we've now made this match. 
A to deselect. So from the top, it looks good. One from the side. And from the side, we have a couple of problems. Now, it, not, not, not bad problems. I'm going to hit Z just so that we can see this. And I'm going to tab out. And what the heck, we'll hit smooth for right now. All right, so we've got the basic shape of most of it. Now, down at the bottom, uh, I'm going to hold down Shift on my keyboard, left-click the top left layer, and put this in with our with our 3D model. Okay, we can. It's not bad, shaping up. It's the, kind of the right size, but we're going to have to do some manipulation. Number one, this is w far way too far up. Number two, although this part looks good, this part does not match the curve. As a matter of fact, even up front, it doesn't match the curve. It's really squished down. And then this curve goes all the way down here. So we're going to want to change some of that. So if I, well, right now we're just going to hit Rotate. Now our center of the object is is here where this dot is, right at the halfway of the original sphere. So I'm going to rotate and it will rotate at that point. But even if I rotate it, it's really not in line. So it gets thicker here, thinner here, thinner here. All right, so that's not bad. So I'm going to control Z and undo that uh, rotation. I'm going to scale Z to restrict it up and down. And I'm going to make it really thin. Okay, cool. Now we're going to rotate. And that's actually somewhat better. It's not perfect. A couple of things. We can see a gap here. And as a matter of fact, to make a real judgment, I'm going to hit 5 on my keyboard and take us out of orthographic view. Now, that's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. So, what can we do in order to make this a little better? Orientation is a little better because of our rotation. 1, 5, Z, tab to get into it. And, I know this is going to look a little crazy, B to select, and I want to get rid of those vertices at the end that we extruded. So, X, verts. Okay, great. I'm going to select this last row again. B, select. I got them all. Okay. I think I got them all. Yep, I got them all. One. All right, and actually, oh, you know what? Tell you what. A. Not Z. Come on, Eric. Tab. All right. Now, this actually isn't quite right yet. You'll notice, even though we've squished it down, it's still not quite sitting online with the top of this where it disappears. So I still want it to disappear into the hull right around this same spot. So I'm going to rotate this a little more. I'm going to go to Z. I'm going to grab. So now I can see the thing. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's grab Z. So G and Z and bring it down so that the edge, the circular edge, you can still see it here, and it's just coming out of the hull here. Okay, that's actually not looking bad. One, Z again. I don't actually need all these verts down here, but again, we'll take care of that in a little bit. Uh, I might flatten it just a little more. Scale, Z, a little, little flatter, not too much. Let's rotate it back a little this way, and Z. Okay, cool. Let's take a gander at that. Not too bad. That actually kind of looks like one of the reference photos that I showed you. All right, cool. So we're going to tab back into edit mode, and now we're finally going to grab. Now you can use B or you can use C to select all those, as long as you're in transparent mode, it should get both sides for you. And I'm going to E to extrude. And this time I'm not going to hit uh, 
Actually, I am. Uh, what the hell? Well, uh, no, I, I don't want to hit X. Let's just extrude this, and you can look and see where we're going. So if we go to here, that's about the thickest part of the whole thing. Hello, Clyde. My cat came by to say hello. Let's go take a look at the top view. We're going to scale Y. Go back to 1. And believe it or not, we're actually going to scale Z. Make this a little larger. And let's hit Z to see how this is looking. All right now, the edge is up too far. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to 1. We're going to G for grab, Z for up and down. And we're going to move this down so that the edge of, the, of our construct here is kind of following the curve of the hull. So let's grab Z. And as a matter of fact, you can see this line here. It pretty much goes right up to here. All right, so not bad, but we've got to hit scale Z and make this a little thicker to meet that line. Okay, cool. So now, Z to see everything transparent again. E to extrude. Let's move this down. Let's go up top. And we're going to scale Y. Bring that right in line with our drawing. Go to view 1. And let's scale Z just a little bit. Actually, what I should do is hit Z to see where we are. Grab G and then restrict it to up and down movement, Z. And move this down so that this line here stays just above the saucer's edge. All right, not bad. So scale Z, make that fit. All right, cool. Uh, Z to make it all transparent again. Uh, we're going to hit E to extrude. Let's go up top. You know what? Let's grab X and move it right down to where it begins to flare back out. Okay, cool. Go back to 1 and Z. And that line is, well, okay, tell you what, we're going to scale Z just a little bit and then grab Z, move this end up just a tad and not, not too shabby. All right, so we've got that line there again, just skimming the hull. So we're going to scale Z and bring it down and in line. Okay, not bad, not bad. Now, let's go back up top, Z to see all the way through, scale, Y, bring that in line with our drawing, okay, and tell you what, right now I'm just going to hit Z for zebra, A to deselect, tab, just so that we are in our object mode here and not in edit mode, and with a middle mouse click, I'm going to look around the whole thing. As a matter of fact, five on my keyboard to get rid of orthographic view. And you know what? That's not looking bad. That's pretty good. It's got that squished front. It comes right down on the top, rounded, thicker in this section. Comes back down, becomes a little thinner, stays rounded the whole way. All right. 7, 5, Z, tab. All right. And then we're, we're going to select this end section again. So B or C, select all those verts. And this is going to be interesting. Now, I'm going to do this by continuing, <coughs> pardon me, continuing the way we've been doing it. I'm going to extrude a little bit, alter it, extrude a little bit, alter it. Although there is another way. Actually, let's do it the other way. So let's hit E to extrude, X, so that we are only going in one direction. And let's bring this whole assembly out here to the end. Go to one, take a look at it. Okay, it's there. It's right at the bottom edge. It's not at the top. And this is probably a really good time to rotate this. So this is going to be something a little different. I don't believe we've done this before. I'm going to rotate this so that I can see my 
middle line here. So this is running right down the center. And I'm just going to click on the bottom most vertex. Okay. Shift S cursor to select it. All right. So our 3D cursor is right there. I want to go to view one. Now I want to select all of these end verts, not just that one anymore. So now they're all selected. And we're going to go over here, drop this down and pick 3D cursor. So we want the 3D cursor to be where everything is centered in rotating these verts. And we're going to hit R to rotate. And I'm going to rotate them to match the angle, the end angle of that linear accelerator. A, Z, 1, tab. And actually, you know what? That ain't bad. All right, but hang on one second. Going back to this photo from Chris Trice, we can see that there's actually a flattened bottom just above <coughs> the, uh, the impulse engines. So we're going to have to recreate that, and this needs to be a solid object. All right, so let's go back into edit mode. So tab and... I often like to do this. Uh, now, one of the interesting things is I was going to get rid of the bottom. But if we look at that picture again, we need the bottom to this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten out some of these vertices. Okay. So I'm going to go to Z, 1, and, oh, wait a minute, where does that become flat? becomes flat at the edge of the curve. So, Z, the edge of the curve for me is actually right here. I'm going to go, yeah, right there, basically. It's the center vert uh, from top to bottom. All right. So, I'm going to hit Z. I'm going to use that as my Q. I'm going to hit B to select and grab all these bottom verts. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. Uh, a to deselect, and then B, and I'm only going to select the two center verts, left and right. Okay, cool. We're going to do this same trick again. Shift, S, cursor to select it. I had something in mind when I started this. I'm wondering whether or not this is going to be correct or not. <laughs> anyway, all right, cool. So now, I want to select that vert and all of these. Oh, and first, just to make sure, let's hit whoops, Z. And that's actually just above the hull. So we're going to have to make some changes. All right. So knowing that, let's deselect A. And I want to select everything below that vert. So B or C, and select everything just below the center. Cool. Matter of fact, I'm going to hit Control-3, Z like zebra, so I can actually see this thing. If I intend to flatten this out now, I should pick more. All right. One, Z like zebra to make it transparent, and I want to select all of the corresponding verts here as well. So B. Now I've got actually faces selected uh, by default. Whenever you pick all four verts on a face, the face is also de facto selected. Now, I don't care what it looks like for the rest under here. We can even get rid of that later. But for right now, we're going to hit scale Z zero. Enter. All right, so we have flattened out into the hull, all the way out the back. The problem is it's lying just a little bit above, and it's in line with our center verts, which we don't really want. So control three, so I'm looking at it from the back, Z, so that it's solid. I haven't deselected anything yet, so I'm gonna hit G for grab, Z for up and down, and I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit. I'm going to hit Z to make it transparent again. 
Let's take a look at it from the side one. Okay, so grab Z. All right, so that's not bad. Let's take a look here. And what do I mean by that? I mean, it's just above the impulse engines. It's just below the lip of the edge of the curve of the saucer, which is pretty much what I want. I'm going to go to 7. Since these are all in line from front to back, I'm sorry, from top to bottom, top to bottom, I also want them straight uh, from front to back. But do I? Do I want that straight from front to back? Yes, it appears to be straight. But tell you what, we're going to, well, scale X, zero. All right. What I'm going to do is Z. I want to get out of perspective mode, and I want to see what that looks like. All right, so it's not bad. Uh, let's go back to 5 uh, and Z. And is this really matching? No. So we're going to have to, we're going to, have to do some playing around here. All right, so how about... Oh, did I move a bunch of those forward? I did. Control Z. All right, cool. I want to deselect everything. I only want these this end set selected. So I'm going to hit C. And I'm just going to select those bottom verts. I had also had these selected from when we flattened it. One. All right. So it still retains the curve. Now I'm going to go to seven. Scale X zero. Enter. All right, cool. So now we, it's only affecting the verts that we want. Go to one. And ah, this is a lot better. So we're going to grab X and move this so that this is kind of all in line. All right, that's not bad. A. Z, let's take a look at it. Tab out. All right, you know what? Not too shabby. Let's compare. May not be perfect, but by golly, it's close. Okay. So now we need to close this up. Now there's no magic close, close up. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can do this in quads. So I'm looking at it from kind of the top and get a load. If I pick the top center, the bottom center, and then say the next two verts on the right, both top and bottom, and hit F for face, I'm starting to close this up. So I'm going to keep picking four of these, two top, two bottom, that are matched, and hitting face, the uh, F to create a face. We're going to run into, are we going to run into a problem here? One, two, three, four, F. And then we're going to make one try. I don't like tries, but there we are. All right, so that's faced off, so to speak. We're going to do it from this other side as well. Select f any four verts that are in line and adjacent. Hit F on your keyboard and make a face and make a is that what they call them? Yeah, face. And then <coughs> pardon me, we need to close this off. So this side is a try as well. If I was to put in a cut here and here, we could actually make that a quad. That actually might be worth it. Anyway. Tab to get out of it, zoom out, 5 to get rid of our, pers our orthographic into perspective. All right, you know what? I'm actually going to go back and I am actually going to somehow add in a cut. I probably should have changed. Well, all right, uh, let's see. Tell you what. Instead, let's go to modifiers, add modifier, and we're going to do edge split. Yeah, all right. Not going to apply it yet. We'll come back to that later when we're done. That's actually not too shabby. Now, the only thing that's missing 
is the flare out. Okay, so I'm going to tab in. We're going to select all the verts here on the bottom. This time we're going to scale Y. So we don't want to make it taller. And we want to make it match the width of that back end piece. All right, cool. Not perfect yet, but what we're going to do is we're going to add some extra cuts, some extra lines here, and we're going to create the curve ourselves. Let's go to 1, Z, and we're still in line. Okay, cool. So, so long as we restrict our changes to the Y axis, we'll actually be okay. A to deselect. We're going to hit Control R, and we by default place a line of verts right in the center, which is nice. I'm going to hit S to scale it. Oh, hang on. I'm sorry. Let's go over here and go to bounding box center, scale Y, and bring it down to meet our curve. A to deselect and Z. All right. Believe it or not, the shape is getting there. And what we're going to do is we're going to do enough of these additional lines to make that look rounded. So Z, Control R, Scale Y. Okay, A to deselect, Control R, Scale Y. All right, cool. And now, probably one more set inside each of these. Control R, scale Y, A, control R, scale Y, A. Control R. Scale Y. Matter of fact, Z, A. I want to select this line here, B. Only this line of verts. Scale Y. A, Z. And you know what? That doesn't look bad. Tab. We've got our flat face. One. It is angled forward, just like the drawings, okay? It's got the curved edges. We've made a five out of perspective view. We've made the linear accelerator with everything except for the top uh, aerolons or fins or whatever that is. Okay, cool. We're going to hit A to deselect because that part is done. I think that that closely resembles here. Let me spin this around and kind of change our view a little bit and let's grab one of Chris's uh, images all right not bad top maybe a little too thin but it's oops sorry but it's not too bad All right, get out of that and get out of that. All right, cool. So now we need something rounded that we can make three, three kind of louvers out of from the front and it becomes square in the back. So let's go back to a top view, seven, five to get our orthographic view again, Z to make everything transparent. Shift S cursor to, whoops, Shift S cursor to center. And I'm going to add a cube. Shift A mesh cube. Okay, so we've got a nice, great big, giant, huge cube. Scale that down to make it fairly small. Grab X, move it back to our linear accelerator, zoom in. Oh, you know what? I don't want a cube. I know I didn't want a cube, and yet I picked a cube anyway. X, delete. All right, we're going to shift A, mesh, and cylinder. 
right. All right, so got a cylinder. It almost doesn't matter how many verts we've got. I don't think. Uh, all right, so we're going to scale, make that tiny, grab X, move it by our linear accelerator, go to view number one, grab Z. We're going to center it kind of towards the top. Uh, let's center it right about here. Scale Z, make this come down, and match. You know what? I need this to go <clears throat> to be thicker. It's got this top line has to be there, uh, but this bottom has to go. Well, the bottom only has to go underneath the surface of our of our modified sphere here. So I think this will actually do. All right, so we'll leave that. Grab X. Let's move that forward a little bit. Seven. Okay, and it just meets the top. Well, actually, you know what? All that was for nothing. So I'm going to scale, bring it down. I want it to be no larger than the width of this thing here. All right, so now grab X and make it match right there. Whoops, shift S, cursor to center. All right, cool. Let's scale. There we are. Go to one. Scale Z. I need it to be larger. Okay, that's cool. Actually, scale Z, make that match. All right, good. It matches the top. <coughs> it should stay under this whole thing. We can always adjust the bottom if we have to. All right, cool. So now, tab A. All righty. Now, the center of this particular cylinder is right here. So I want to select everything to the left, B. I want to keep that center set of verts, X to delete the vertices, and let's look up top. Ah, nice. Shaping up nicely. All right. Now I want to select those center verts, top and bottom, B, select them. And actually, you know what, while we're here, Let's hit F for face. A, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to hit Z so we can see the whole thing. Because I, I deleted it and we didn't have the top all set, this thing is not a solid. So right here, before this gets any more difficult, I want to pick four adjacent verts, make faces, just like we did on the back of the linear accelerator. And make a bunch of faces. There is a way to include a top whenever you're making these things. And of course, like everything I'm doing, because I'm just not using the right settings on my cylinders, the last one is a try. But at least it looks solid. And what the heck, smooth. And of course, an edge split for now. Okay, cool. So we're kind of getting what we want. Z. Uh, now we can pick the four vertices here at the very end. I'm going to go to seven. Center this up. I'm going to E to extrude. X to restrict its motion to just front and back. It does not get thicker or thinner, and I want to take it all the way to the end here. And then one, and what we've got to do is we've got to angle this. And we want to base the angle on the bottom verts here because this goes up. I don't want to twist the whole thing. I just want to move this top angle back. We can do that a couple of ways. I'm going to deselect and hit B. Now, I've selected both of the bottom verts, right? Shift S. Cursor to select it, it'll place it right in the middle. Now the bottom won't move, but if I select all four of these, I can hit rotate and then move it. Not exactly what I want. Pick this, aim our angulation at the 3D cursor, rotate, and that's not bad, but it's going down. It's making it 
uh, less tall. So actually, I'm going to deselect everything. I'm going to leave the bottom verts exactly where they are. B to select the top. Grab X and just move it forward. Ta-da! A to deselect. Tab to get out. Z so we can see what we're doing. And look at that. We've got something that's the right thickness running from back to front. Not too bad. But we need for there to be three kind of fins coming out of the top. Hang on one second. You can just see it here in this Chris Trice photo. Of course, it's a little more prominent here. You can see these three kind of equidistant things running from top to back. And this photo is certainly good enough to show you what I mean. Here are those three fins. They're even kind of rounded to match this rounding up front. They are about equal in thickness, and they run from front to back. All right, they're not real deep down, but they are there. So let's put them in hours. So I'm going to take a look at this from the back. So control three, control number pad three, right? Here's our item. If you want to make this less confusing, with this one item selected, move it to, say, three, and then let's go to layer three. All right, so here we are. This is the only object in the whole thing, in the whole layer. <sighs> Control three, and we're looking at it from the back. All right, tab to go into edit mode. Z to make it transparent, and we can see all the verts from the front. Matter of fact, I should have paid closer attention. How many have we got? Have we got any... Yeah, so we want a kind of a divot in here and here. So we've actually got some verts that would probably be useful here and here. Well, here and here, actually. So if we had a channel that ran all the way down there like that, that would certainly work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control R, and we get one right down the center. But if you scroll up with your mouse wheel, we actually start to get something interesting. We've got, I, I've got four lines now, which gives us, yeah, I'm going to just accept that and deselect it, A. So get a load of this. If I wanted to, if we move these down here, these faces, say here, and over here, let's take a look at that last picture again. It goes all the way out to the edge. All right. I'm going to zoom in real, whoops, seven. I want to zoom in real carefully here. And I want to get as close to that front edge as I can, but that there's a try there. I'm going to leave that. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. We could always put in a couple of extra cuts here. Uh, well, and now that I've said all of that, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go back to verts. A to deselect everything. And I want to put in one, two, three, four lines here. Probably the easiest way to do this. Is there an easy way, Eric? I'm going to select these edges. Edges only and delete them. All right. So I deleted one edge. Uh, heck. Delete the other edge. All right. Cool. So now we're going to, we're going to kind of trick this thing. Go back to vert, vert, vertice selection. And we're only going to pick this top, so let's go to f uh, full mode so you can, uh, to non-transparent mode so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm not going to create a full face yet. I'm just going to select two verts and hit F, and I get an edge. So two verts, hit F, and I get an edge. All right, fine. Now what I want to do is I want to subdivide this here. Whoops. 
let's pick here and here and we're going to subdivide twice we're going to pick here and here and subdivide twice okay cool now believe it or not this is not actually exactly what I want a to deselect I only want two of these and I've got three so there are a couple of ways I could have done it but this vert here and this vert here are actually extra verts so I'm going to shift select both of them X to delete them and delete vertices now I'm going to select these two verts and hit face and these two verts and hit face and because these are all going down and becoming smaller and smaller that's actually not too shabby the one that seems really the the two I'm sorry that seem out of place are these two and if I look at them real close see this almost looks like it makes a line here but this doesn't this needs to be closer up front so we're going to shift V like Victor and we get this indicator of where we're going to move this line and we're going to move it just shy of the center let's take a look at that from up top <clears throat> this line will go here and this line will go right there which is actually really nice a to deselect we're going to do the same thing over here we're going to pick the center vert and this vert over on the other side and we're going to subdivide twice and then we're going to do the same down here subdivide twice we're going to pick this last vert that we created on both top and bottom so shift right mouse click X to delete those vertices then we're going to pick vertice shift vertice F face vertice shift vertice vertex vertex uh, and then F for face we're going to leave those two just like we did on the other we're going to select these two center ones uh, control I'm sorry shift V we're going to get that new line and we're going to place it kind of like we did with the other so when we look at it from on top this looks about to be the same distance as this actually it's not bad it may be slightly different but at this scale uh, unless you're gonna go in for a really extreme close-up no one will ever know the hairdresser is the only one to know right now we've got to do what we did before we've got to make faces so we're going to this first one's a try I'm gonna hit this this and this so that's shift right mouse clicks F a left uh, I'm sorry a right mouse click and then shift right mouse clicks for the next quad and this is gonna be weird here uh, actually you know what let's take this center set of verts out of the equation highlight both of them hit X vertices we're going to select these center four and hit F for face all right so that center vert is gone it's not gonna bother us anymore and we can continue making faces I know that line sounds funny until we have filled in all the faces up top we're going to do the same on the edge select four verts at a time face four verts at a time face face and face okay the only thing we have is the faces here uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't finish this one face. Whoops. Okay. Now, there's a face everywhere we cannot see inside. However, these two faces look different than the rest. That's because their normals have been flipped. I'm going to go into face selection mode. I'm going to pick this with the right mouse click and then shift click for this one. We're going to go to mesh, normals, and flip. Okay, A to deselect. Everything looks good. And now, what I want to do is, I want to pick all of these faces here that we're going to move down. So, 
we're going to right mouse click and then shift right mouse click all of these that lead up to the front and then do the same on this side want to do them at the same time this is going to leave something that we don't want here we'll address that in a minute because this is probably going to stay exactly where it is. Sc scroll out, and I want to pick these. I want to add these uh, center selections here, left and right. So we've got what's going to be three ribs running all the way back to front. And we're going to have a problem back here as well. But again, we will attend to that in just a minute. Let's go to 1, Z to make it transparent. And based off of this picture, oh, not this picture. Based off of this picture where we can see how deep this is, it's not very deep at all. So we're going to move these down just a little bit. So we're going to E to, whoops, sorry, E to extrude. And it's already in the Z direction, so we're going to move these down just a little bit. Okay, cool. I'm going to hit Z so we can see what we're doing. And not too shabby. The only thing is, I'm going to hit A to deselect. I'm going to do 5 to get out of our perspective mode. Out of our orthographic mode. And we are left with, well, not to put too fine a point on it. We've got this little shelf here. This, because the full faces in the back and in the front, believe it or not, are still there. I don't think in the front it's that big of a deal. But what we're going to do is we're going to switch to vertex mode. We can actually see where this is causing something of a problem here because the program doesn't know how to handle what we've told it to do. Back here, not such a big deal. I'm going to go to 1. 5 to go back to orthographic, Z to see right through this thing. I'm going to scroll in till we see the front. Now this line is that floor that we just made when we brought everything down. What we want to do is we want to hit Control R. We're going to add a new line. When we hit left mouse click, we get something that we can move up and down. I want to make it match that line. All right. Close enough. Oh, actually not close enough. Let's go in. Take a gander. So control Z. Control R. Move it up. Hang on. Control R. Actually, let's center this up a little bit. I'm not not doing so hot here. Control R, there we go. Okay, so actually I can zoom in a little more. I'm going to right mouse click. That's right about here. So Control R. Good, I can actually see my line. Left mouse click once, scroll it up. And it's pretty darn close. If I wanted to make a change, I'm scrolling all the way in that I can. Everything is still selected. I'm going to hit. Uh, shift V like Victor. And I'm going to move that new line down here so that it intersects with that floor that we made. And I'm going to hit A to deselect. And you know what? That's that's not bad. All right. So now, we've still got this face here that the program doesn't know what to do with. And actually, you know what? We don't need it. So I'm going to go into face selection mode. I'm going to click this. Shift, click that. X, face. And we're going to do it the same for the interfaces. X, face. All right, cool. Now the program knows what to do. The only thing it's going to have a problem with is probably this edge here. Not too shabby. Now I'm going to... Go all the way back here because this would be a little more problematic. All right, so we've got these faces that we don't need. Let's go to 1, Z. 
All right, because this went straight down, these don't these don't exactly match. So we're going to handle this a little differently. If I go to Z, and I'm going to pick edges, I'm going to pick this edge and this edge, and you'll find out that there are actually four of them. X edges. Oh, actually, there's there's not. All right. That's all right. This is actually easier to handle. Now that we got rid of that, we're going to go back to vertex selection mode. And I'm going to pick these three here and hit F for face. Then I'm going to pick these two on the bottom, these two on the bottom, F for face, these three, F for face, these three, F for face, these four, F for face, and these three. F for face. Okay, cool. Tab out, and let's take a look at this thing. We've got the three louvers on the top. They actually come in, and just like on the real thing, are rounded towards the front, although this one should probably just be square. You know what? Not bad. I'm going to leave it. Now that this is in uh, object mode, we're going to M, move it, to the first layer. I'm going to go here to the second layer. Let's grab our linear accelerator. M move to the first layer. And let's go to the first layer. Okay, cool. The only thing that's odd is that I made the floor just here front a little too low. All right, so Z. Let's pick this thing here. I'm going to move this to the second layer. <coughs> We're going to go to the second layer and take a look. Z to make that thick. So believe it or not, up front, that floor is too low. It goes below the hull. We don't want that. So one. Z. Yeah, there it is. Going just a little low. All right, so tab to enter vertex mode. I'm going to grab these vertices, B. Actually, you know what? Hang on. <sighs> if we just move them up, it would probably be noticeable. I'm going to grab just these verts, B, here at the end, all right, where we made this one line for the floor, right? I'm going to shift S cursor to select it. So that puts it right in the middle. All right, cool. Now I want all the verts that make up this whole floor component selected. So we're going to keep the ones that we've got. We're going to shift right mouse click each of these verts back here. That's good. One. I want to go all up front. I want to hit B. Select all of these. It's going to create something of a problem when we do this, but it shouldn't be too bad to fix. And because we've got the cursor in the back, the back shouldn't move those verts, but I'm going to pick R to rotate and move these up to be just above the surface of the hull. If we go in and take a look at this, that's actually not too bad. It's just in the front. These are, well, let's take a look at Z. You know what? I think we can get away with it. A to deselect everything. Tab to get out of edit mode. It doesn't look bad. There's just that little tiny opening there. Now, we can go in and we can fix this tiny area here. All right, so let's, let's do that right now. Tab. Uh, if I pick this, do I see something in every direction? I do. So I don't think it's actually doubled. All right, it's just an odd thing. Program probably hasn't seen much like that. 
you could probably put extra time in it, but it's not too shabby, and it's an area that won't be seen well. I'm tabbing out. I'm moving the whole assembly back to the first layer. I'm going to the first layer, five to get out of orthographic mode, A to deselect the thing. And now, that's actually not bad. You've got your curved front with your three veins that run all the way to the back. You've got the end of the linear accelerator looking pretty much like what's in the plans. Cool. All right, we're going to stop there on this lesson, and next we'll pick up with the impulse engines. Don't forget, file, save, or control S, and save your work. That was a lot of work.